All right, guys, we're here with Derek Walker. Uh, Derek, w welcome to Oversteer TV. Well, thanks uh, for having me on. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to get right to it because I know you're a busy man. Um, you've been out of IndyCar for a few years, and all of a sudden, it kind of like sucked you back in. What brought you back into IndyCar? Uh, well, in, in 2007 uh, was the last full season I had with Champ Car. Uh, and and I had a business partner who um, left me uh, holding the holding the bomb, so to speak. And so I had to take a little bit of time off to regroup. But I've been really trying to get back into IndyCar, and um, this situation came up. So uh, it seemed like a good idea at the time, and here we are. Um, you, you, for those out there who don't know, you now are you're running. You're pretty much the manager for Ed Carpenter Racing. Um, yeah. How's it been going with the new car? I know everything's all new in IndyCar, new car, new engine, everything. Well, um, very challenging, I would say. Um, but ha but saying that, I would I would also say that the team that we've got and the kind of workload that they've had to do in the short space of time, they've managed it very well. But it's a bit of um, a situation, and I'm sure lots of teams are in the same boat, is uh, you just can't learn fast enough. You know, there's new cars, new engines. Um, this new car is quite different from last year's car. And so uh, you just can't get enough time to uh, learn everything you need to. So every race event it ends up being, uh, you know, basically a test, a test series, uh, you know, going through the, the changes that you do to explore what, what will this car like at the event and racing it mm -hmm. hopefully you get it as close as you can before the start of the race and uh, and move on to the next one so it's it's a really challenging year for for everybody in IndyCar but you know I think if you asked everybody you have to say it's a nice problem to have mm -hmm. um, well th this past weekend at Barber you guys didn't have the best race um, I believe you guys had a lot of problem with understeer with the car and everything now when you go to your next race Long Beach are you like do you still take that data and what you learned at Barber and try to apply it in Long Beach, even though it didn't go that well? Or it's kind of like, hey, let's throw that all away and let's start over again for Long Beach? <laughs> <laughs> no, you never throw it all away. There's always an evolution of, of some of the ideas and some of the directions. No, I think we probably carry to Long Beach more of what we learned at St. Petersburg. Um, a lot of things at St. Petersburg are very similar to what you'll experience at uh, Long Beach. So we would evolve from where we, we left off at uh, St. Petersburg. Um, Barber Motorsports Park is, uh, is a real, what I call a real road course. Uh, it, you know, it's a medium, it's a fast corner, it's a very flowing racetrack. So what you need there is quite different from what you, you get a point and shoot uh, at, at a Long Beach kind of a, an environment where you're downtown, low grip, and, and you're doing a lot of squirts, a lot of sharp turns, slowing, braking, accelerating. So it's, uh, it's a different track, so it will require a different setup. Although the barber setup we had wasn't good enough, so probably some of it might go out the window. <laughs> Um, I, well, you do like you know. It's obvious you do apply St. Pete to, to Long Beach. But are you going to use any of the stuff that was learned before with the previous chassis, or is that just totally not applicable? Uh, no, it's always applicable because you're you know the one thing it doesn't change is the racetrack and the tires are the same Firestone tires. Um, so there's not a huge, you know, you're still trying to get this different car to do what you've always been trying to do with the car before. Um, what we're finding, though, is um, I always think each car has a certain character. And the, um, the last year's car was a, a particular kind of, it was an oval car originally that evolved into a road course car, and it had certain limitations in that. This car is a clean sheet of paper, design it to be the optimum for both uh, oval and street course racing. Uh, and so just because it is quite different, uh, it will require different things. So that's part of the process when I say we just can't learn fast enough. As you go through your logbook of ideas and things that you know um, that you've done in the past and that worked in the past, and you, you apply them. 
to the dynamics that this particular car offers and you, you find out if they work. And if they do, they keep them and you build on them. If they don't, you go say, okay, that one didn't work. It was a different year, different car. It's not applicable. And you move on to what, what does this car need? And um, that's a part of the process that goes on all the time, really. It's just we've got a mountain of stuff because everything's new at the moment. But once we've run a year or two, we'll still be doing a lot of that evolving uh, i'm still sticking with the new car what's the one thing in the new chassis that is that that's going oh i love it that's that's the thing i am so happy as opposed to last year's chassis that's a good question um what i personally like about it is it's i think it's a well-engineered car in the sense that it's manufactured um uh, the quality of the manufacturing, um, uh, the Delara and Extract and, uh, and the engine, you know, everything, everybody's stuff is, is engineered quite, quite high quality. So I think that part of it's pretty good. Uh, with that, you know, it brings um, a, a price. So I'm sure most of the team owners are, um, you know, getting their head around how much this new package costs because, uh, as soon as you start changing anything, it does cost you more money. So we're we're spending money like drunken sailors here, but uh, that's all part of the game. <laughs> well, what's that old saying? What's the best way to make a million dollars in racing? Start with two million. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Well, you know, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. But you know, uh, any time you bring out a new car, and the other thing I think it's worth bearing in mind when we talk about the new car and the engine, is um, I can't think, and I've been around racing for, I don't know, 30, 40 years, 40 years probably, uh, I can't think of another time where a formula stopped and said, okay, we're going to have a new car, and they started with a clean sheet of paper and said, okay, we're going to design a new car, it's going to be a, a new engine spec, it's going to be this and that, mm -hmm. and actually changed the rules that drastically. Usually... You know, you introduce things over time and you change them over time. It's not a complete clean sheet of paper to start from, from zero and build up. Mm -hmm. And what that's really done is compacted a lot of work into what has been a very short space of time. And uh, probably all of us have forgotten when we used to buy new cars, which were evolutionary cars from the year before, but we, there was still a lot of work in them. Uh, we've forgotten how much work in how work intensive that was, and of course now with the new car, a uh, clean sheet of paper, uh, it's it's a huge amount of work to produce it and to for the teams to race it. But um, you know, I guess that's what they pay us for. We're <laughs> we're flat out trying to trying to make it happen. Okay, I'm going to change a little gears here a little bit from IndyCar to America Le Mans. You're also the team manager for the the Porsche for the Falcon Tire team. Now, yeah. um, you've been doing that for a while. Uh, how does how is that much of an adjustment for you to go from IndyCar and all of a sudden flip a switch? You're dealing with the with with that team. Um, well, I, I think the if if I wasn't so um, uh, well endowed with good employees on both programs, I think it would be very difficult to jump back and forward. But I have two good managers in Tim Broyles on the IndyCar program, and I've got Phil Howard on the ALMS program. So these are my right, right hand man on both programs. So that that uh, allows me the luxury to be able to float between both programs. Um, both programs are quite interesting in their own way, and I think. Being in both series and being, uh, you know, one day on this car, one day on that car, or one race, you're here, they're there, um, is a, it's quite a unique um, opportunity to look at two totally different racing series and how they function. You've got a, a production car that wants to be a race car, and you've got a race car that wants to be faster than we the regulations will let it. And, and so they've got two different... Um, programs, different cars, different equipment, but, you know, at the end of the day, um, it's racing, and they are very similar in that respect, as they both want to win, they have different race lengths and things like uh, different hurdles to overcome, 
But at the end of the day, it's all about people, and it's a people business. We can have different cars, but the thing that's always the same is, is the people. So for me, it's, it's relatively um, busy, but it works because of the people we have on both programs. Well, you say busy. I'm sure you're going to be busy in a couple of weeks in Long Beach because you have IndyCar and America Le Mans the same weekend. Um, one thing, though, in IndyCar, you race, everybody races the same tires, the Firestones. You have two different compounds, but it's all spec tires. There's really not much you can do about it. Correct. A in the America Le Mans, you're racing the Falcon tires, which nobody else races. You're basically the Falcon factory team in sports car racing. So when you're in America Le Mans, are you spending more tire time in tire development as opposed to working with the tires of IndyCar, or it's pretty much you, you take what Falcon gives you? Uh, no, no, we're very much a part of that process of developing the tires. Um, I, I think uh, it's fair to say that the race team has a fair amount of influence over the tire engineers in how the directions they go in. And when you think about it, to optimize the tires, um, the car and the tires must go together. Um, you can't design a tire in a vacuum uh, and you can't race a car in a vacuum. They both need each other. And so the process of working together is one of the, um, the nicer parts of this program, I think, pleasantly so, because it's, um, it's interesting to be involved in that process. And I think the Le Mans series is unique in that sense here in, in the U.S. in so much that you have these multi-manufacturers that are all working in uh, in that sport, racing against you know we're racing against the Corvettes and the uh, you know the Ferraris and the Michelins and all those you know you've got a huge variety which sort of is the way racing used to be so in that respect it's it's uh, I enjoy it thoroughly and it, it it's um, a process that uh, you know a lot of us really um, uh, wish was more there was more of. Uh, these days mm -hmm. um one last question that kind of popped into my head you're known you're legendary for be formula cars you know all those years with penske and then your own team and everything and then you switched and then you were in sports car racing how much of a switch was that for you how much of a change was that for you to go from the open wheels of formula cars to sports car racing um, I think the change itself was not difficult. Um, what, what is uh, time-consuming, and I'm still on that treadmill. I'm not, I've not reached the, uh, where I need to be. But the thing that's different uh, in any series is they have a different rule book, they have different procedures, different officials, different way of doing things. In a, and and it's, if you're in a position that I'm in, you're supposed to know most things, right? You're supposed to know what the hell's going on. So, so, so the, the biggest problem for me is trying to you know, uh, run this program effectively uh, as, as I'm learning on the job. And so learning what the nuances of each uh, series. So that's been both the interesting but the most challenging part of the job. But the actual racing, you know, there's a whole process in, in racing that um, is unique to racing. It's not necessarily unique to a Porsche RSR or, or to a Dallara IndyCar. Um, the process is very similar. It's just, you know, driven by the budget, the time and rule book. If you've got enough time, if you've got enough money and the rule book will let you do it, right. uh, you'll go do it, right? And uh, so uh, those parts are pretty consistent across racing. But um, it's just learning the nuances of uh, ALMS. And as I say, I'm still, I'm still on that learning curve at the moment. As my, the employees here will tell you, I'm still, <laughs> still got a lot of ways to go. <laughs> well, if there's one thing I've learned in racing, anybody who says they know any, everything about racing – usually have no clue what's going on. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't think I've ever reached that far, but, you know, I hope one day I can. <laughs> well, if, if, if there is somebody who knows a, a lot about racing who I would put there near the top of that, it would, it would have to be you. I mean, come on, you're a legend well, in the industry. Well, I don't know. Legend sounds very old. And, and <laughs> one, one thing racing is not age <laughs> no it's not no it's not <laughs> in fact, if you're a legend you probably deserve to be in the museum uh, no 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 so um derek i know you're a busy man so i'm gonna let you go i want to thank you very much for being on oversteer tv 
Well, glad to be uh, on, and I'm, I appreciate you asking me to come on and share my uh, my theory on where we are and what we are, and look forward to uh, showing some some results here in the near future. Well, we'll be. Wa- I'll definitely be watching Long Beach. In fact. My wife will probably kill me for all the hours between America Le Mans and IndyCar. How much am I going to be spending in front of the TV? So uh, good luck out there. Well, thanks very much. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.